next up, MMS. MMS. That is the mechanical mass of the driver's uh, diaphragm assembly and the voice coil with the air load. So again, you're moving the speaker. So there's a little bit of it when you're taking this measurement. So there's a little bit of an air load on the cone, mm -hmm. on the spider. Mm -hmm. And so that adds a little extra mass. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump on down sure. to, to sure. MMD because that is the same exact thing, but without the air load. So it's just the mass of the moving parts of the speaker and the voice coil. So there's a lot of discussion about uh, pressed paper, non-pressed paper, polypropylene. Uh, what, what, what's all this about? Well, you know, different materials have different uh, uh, ratings of stiffness. Obviously, you can make them thicker by, uh, or stiffer by making them thicker. Sure. You know, so you just use what's best for the amount of stiffness that you need mm -hmm. and whatever efficiency level you want to hit. Some stuff you can, you, you make it so thick to get it to the stiffness that you want, but it's too heavy mm -hmm. and that kills your efficiency. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, you know, select different materials to try to get the rigidity that we need, but still keep it lightweight and efficient. So the Solo X, the, the new Solo X, is a non no a pressed paper pulp, it is a right? pressed paper pressed pulp yes okay. and that's exactly why we use it it gives us stiffness uh lots of stiffness yeah. without being too heavy yeah okay. so we can maintain efficiency and the front of that driver is smooth but the back side is uh, uh rough I'm not yeah rough. it's kind of rough you know it's yeah. so many drivers are done that way yeah. you know press yeah. pulp uh they don't really need to be finished on the back side right, right. so you know that's that's why that's the case <laughs> we we used to joke about so when i worked at polk audio we had a lot of home subwoofers and if you look at a car audio subwoofer they're usually beautiful you look at the backside of a home audio subwoofer and it's boring there's nothing there it's just a magnet and a stamp steel frame on a two thousand dollar subwoofer <laughs> yeah well that's because they're just in a box and yes. you know it's not like car audio where people want to show it off to their friends yes. and want it to look cool you that's, know? Right. So that's right it's more of uh, just serves a purpose yes yeah. <laughs> we put a lot of money into the beauty of these designs by the way guys so okay so next up is cms cms that's the compliance or basically how easy is it to move the speaker. How well does the speaker comply with the signal that it's receiving? Um, and then you have the direct inverse of that, which is KMS. A lot of you guys aren't typically gonna see KMS in your box modeling software. This is something that uh, uh, speaker designers use more, um, but it gives them a sense, uh, it's usually represented in a curve, but it gives them a sense of how the stiffness of the spider and, and surround is working. Okay. And it usually matches the BL curve. Okay. Because a BL curve is basically like a smiley face. You have your center, and then you have kind of a, a smiley face with this big flat area. Mm -hmm. That's where your motor strength is the strongest. But as you move the speaker, uh, you know, it, the, the motor strength is going to get a little weaker. Sure. And so as it curves up, at these points here is where your motor strength is, is weaker. Well, on a suspension curve or your KMS curve, mm -hmm. it's kind of going to be the same because as you're moving that, suspension mm -hmm. up, it's getting tighter. Right. And so you still, you have that same kind of smiley face representing your KMS curve. Okay. But that's something that, that typically uh, engineers look at. Uh, CMS is what you guys are gonna be more familiar with in your box modeling software, and that is the compliance of the driver.